Hey, what's good? Hey, let me ask you a question. Which is better, a coach or a mentor? Now, the obvious answer is, well, it depends on the coach or the mentor, their skill level, their success level, their abilities, their reputation, their effectiveness, things of that nature. But the truth of the matter is, maybe we should be asking a different question. What's the difference between a coach and a mentor? And which one is going to help you better? Well, if it's crossed your mind, grab a pad and paper because you're going to want to take some notes on this to choose which one is going to help you. Now, for starters, I'm going to say this. I've said this for a long time, and it is why I became both of them, if you will. Is it the quickest, easiest, fastest, and most effective way of getting from point A to point B, of, of growing and, and going further faster, is to get a coach or a mentor, somebody that's going to help you along the way. Now, there's lots of different things that I also talk about, which is the modeling process, find somebody else that's already done it and, and mentor them, that kind of thing. But if you think about it, in any profession, I use sports, for example, or acting, because I have the privilege of working with both of those types, actors and actresses and, and Grammy winners and, and Academy Award winners and things like that, and sports figures, major sports figures, they all have what? They all have coaches. And those coaches help them in certain ways. But it's really important, and yes, it is important to find out the effectiveness of how well that person is able to coach and mentor the better teacher, because just because you have that label doesn't mean that you're effective, the results that you're going to get. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second, but let's talk about what the difference is first. What the difference and why you might wanna choose one or the other if you have the opportunity to do that. Now, a mentor, or so I say, a coach is somebody that has a skill level, that has the ability to motivate, the ability to encourage and empower, and they can see things and notice things and pick up on things that you might not be able to do your, so yourself. And they can stand on the outside and look and observe and make suggestions to you on what to do to step up your game so that you're on point a lot easier and a lot quicker and a lot faster. And why would you want somebody like that in the first place? It is because you don't want to go through the school of hard knocks. Why would you go through the stuff that you have to go through to get there if you can learn the shortcuts and, the, and let's just say the hacks, if you will, to get there easier, quicker, faster? And that's the difference, is to have somebody that, that can guide you through those kinds of things. But check this out. Although coaches are valuable, and we're all coaches in some way, Coaches are not always better at the thing that they're coaching the person to do. The example might be, if you think about somebody like a Michael Jordan or a Steph Curry or, a, or a, uh, you know, any major sports figure that you can think of, they all have coaches. Matter of fact, some of them have several coaches. Some of them, they might have a shooting coach, and then the guy might have a dribbling coach or you know, a workout coach and those kinds of things. They have several. But... A great deal of the time, the coach is not better at the thing that they're coaching the person to do. In other words, Michael Jordan's coaches aren't better basketball players than Michael Jordan. Now, they may have been in their day, they were great, but they're not better than them now. But they're still valuable. Why? Because like I said, they can see, they can motivate, they can encourage, they can, they can point out some things and bring some things to the surface and, and push you and hold you to a higher standard and hold you accountable to things like that. And that's great. But a mentor, on the other hand, a mentor is somebody that's been there, done that, and is currently better at or, or succeeding at or showing, demonstrating more achievement than the person that they're coaching or they're mentoring. Now, in some cases, which means that in some cases, I am a coach to somebody, and in some cases, I'm a mentor. Now, my background, as you may or may not know, is I'm a psychologist, I'm a neuropsychologist, so I'm a mentor in that way that I've been there, done that, in terms of I'm probably better at helping people get this together than the people that come to me, and that's why they do. So I'm a mentor in that way. But I never enter anybody's life, even when somebody hires me to, to coach them or mentor them, I never me enter their lives feeling like or acting like I'm better at what you do than you do. And I'll give you a perfect example, a couple perfect examples. 
Years ago, I was hired by, and I can't tell you the name because when I, I, when I coach or I mentor somebody, I sign a uh, non-disclosure agreement with them, and, and it's not fair to them anyway, because some of them are not really, you know, uh, they, they uh, don't want their name out there in that way, if you will. But I was hired by an Olympic runner, and this Olympic runner was, uh, he was 36 years, no, he was 34 years old, which was an old Olympian, <laughs> and he had been in several Olympics before. Now, this was back in the year 2000, I believe, and in 2000, uh, this was his last Olympics, and he knew it was his last Olympics, and he said to me, he goes, listen, Joseph, I, I, I want to win a medal. And I said, okay. And he said, I heard you're the best, and I, you know, I want you to coach me. He said, I want you to mentor me. And I said, I will coach you. And he goes, what's the difference? And I said, because I'm not a runner. And he goes, yeah. And I said, I am going to mentor you in what I know. I'm going to mentor you at my spe speciality, but, but you're, I'm going to coach you in the other. And he goes, okay, well, what does that mean? And I said, you know, I broke my knee years ago. I couldn't run around the block if I had to. I don't know how to run, but I do know how to think. And I do know how to help you think differently. And he goes, okay. And he said, but what does that have to do with running? And I said, it has everything. And I'm going to go through this very, very quickly, but, but what I did was I got him to get out and run and show me what it was like when he was running. And by the way, I, these guys are amazing. Guys and women, they're amazing. He ran the equivalent of a mile, one mile. And he wanted to win the medal. And I'm going to go through this really, really quick. I talk about this in depth in my neuroencoding course. But very long story short, I got him to think differently while he was running and when he was finished running. Actually, before, during, and after. Because that's how the brain works. And that's how the brain and the body are connected. And so I got him to think differently before he was running. I got him to think differently during his running. And even when he got finished, very little, short matter of time, he got a medal. Matter of fact, I think he won the silver medal in his, in his, uh, in his sport. And it was in the 2000 Olympics. I share that with you, obviously not to brag or to boast, but in that case, I was both. I was a coach because I didn't run, but I was coaching him on, you know, here's what I notice about you when you're doing this. And I would talk, and by the way, he had other coaches. And these guys and women, they count their steps. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this. And they win or lose in tenths of a second. If they say they're going to cross the finish line in three minutes and 42 seconds, then they cross it in three minutes and 42 seven seconds exactly every time. And so, because I'm a mentor, because I know the difference about what, I know how to help somebody think differently, I got him to realize that his setting that goal at, 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 at three minutes and 42 seconds or whatever it was, and looking at it that way and thinking of it that way, was hindering him. And a couple of other things as well. So why do I share all that with you? What do you want? What is something that you want to get better at? What is something that you want to improve at? What is something that you want to go further faster at. Now, as I said before, there are a couple things that you can do because oftentimes, you know, a coach, a mentor, they're expensive sometimes and it's time consuming. But here's what you do. I'm going to give you a couple tips on, on, on how to find a good coach and mentor and you can work up to what you want because it is so critically important that you have somebody like that in your life. Kind of because, you know, that, that whole thing about surrounding yourself with people that are doing better than you, it really has some merit because it really does make a difference. It makes you feel differently. It makes you do differently. And so sometimes a coach, they're as far as away as this thing that you're viewing me on right now, your laptop or, or your, or your uh, handheld device. You can find coaches and mentors online all over the place. You can, you can pay somebody to do this, but you got to do your homework. Now, by the way, the easiest, quickest, fastest way is go on YouTube. I'll give you another example, real quick example. You know, when I was writing my very first book, Unlimited Power of Black Choice, and I wanted to write a bestseller. I wanted to impact as many people as I possibly can, but the problem was I never wrote a book before. I'd never written anything, and my, my friend, my co-writer, Anthony Robbins, he had written a book before, but he was so busy, and he couldn't really help me. He helped me on a couple things. But I went out and I started looking for a coach and I found a guy. Now it's so much easier now because you can find people online. His name was Jeff Alt. And Jeff wrote, I know it's an old movie now, but it's called Sleepless in Seattle and several other movies and things like that. And what he did, he didn't have time to coach me and he coached me just for a few minutes. And I asked him, I said, what can you tell me about writing? I want to write a bestseller. I want to write something that's epic. I want to write something that changes people's lives. 
And what he said was, here, read this book. And he gave me the book, and the book was called Writer's Journey. And he said, here's what I want you to do. Just do the first three pages, I mean, the first three chapters of this book, but just do it. I did it, and very long story short, my very first book, I'd never written a book before. It's in there. New York Times bestseller. I'm sure not with you not to brag or to boast, but he coached me. A coach doesn't mean that somebody is sitting by your side the entire time. You can find somebody, pick their brain, or now you can go on this thing that all the kids are using now called the internet, YouTube. My son calls it YouTube University. And go on there and you can find somebody to coach you. Just keep it in front of you. Keep it in front of you. And my encouragement to you is to find both, coaches and mentors. Find somebody that's been there, done that. And then also find somebody that's going to hold you accountable to the things that you say you're going to do. Have that thing I talk about, integrity and tenacity. Integrity means do what you say you're going to do. Tenacity means continue to do what you say you're going to do. Coaches, they're super, super valuable. And for you, wherever you are right now, you know, you're listening to me right now. If you're allowing me to be your coach or mentor at this stage right now, then that's great. And then you just elevate it. When you start to make some more money, you got some more time, then you, you can invest in a, you know, a real life life coach or a, or a mentor and things like that. And the one thing I want to say is never be ashamed or afraid to ask for help. See, humility is a strength. Oftentimes, we've, people view humility as, as being a weakness, and it is not. It is an absolute strength. It is something that you want to make as quickly and as often as possible ask for help. But here's the deal. When you get the help, do what they tell you to do. You see, a coach or a mentor is only as good as the student that shows up and does the work. Now, earlier in the beginning of this, I said, you know, it depends on how, how, how good they are. And I'm going to give you some things to look for in coaches and mentors so you can choose the best one that you want. Number one is, is reputation, meaning results that they've gotten. Find the people that they've coached. Find some, some uh, results that they've gotten in terms of the thing that you want them to coach you at. And this is critically important because anybody can hang a sheepskin on the wall and say, I'm this, I'm a, I'm a coach, I'm a mentor, that kind of thing. But do they have the skill level to get the result? Find them. And then also make sure that that person's disposition and the way that they coach and the, the way that they mentor resonates with you. Because if you got somebody that's a jerk and a hard nose and that's not what works for you, then listen, what you're going to do is you're going to be bumping heads and you're not going to do what they suggest or or uh, encourage you to do. And the other thing is that you want to find out what their skill level is, their teaching style is. Now, I'll give you a little hint on something. You want to find somebody that is, uh, that is like you, but a little bit different. And here's what I mean by that. I'm a real visual guy. I talk really fast and I move really fast and everything. And that's my nature. But I'm not always a, a fit for somebody that is a lot more calm. Now, when I am around somebody that's more calm, I will slow myself down because I have that ability, if you will, to relate to somebody and teach them on their level. But you want to find somebody that's either on your level like that, that communicates with you, that you feel good about, that you resonate with, and or somebody that knows how to go up and down and move you through those places as well. See, if you're not the kind of person that is motivated, which I, I really don't encourage people to, to even look for being that motivated by pain. If you don't do this, you need to get up, you need to do this, that kind of the drill sergeant kind of guy. That works for some people. Most people not, quite honestly. There's no incentive to keep up. And why would I put up for this type, with type of an abuse? And you can't stand to be around that kind of person. But instead, if you have somebody that has that compassion and that kind of love, but they are strong and, they're, and, they're, and they, are, 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 they, they have that within them to be able to push you, then that might be the person for you. Now, I always say this, and this is really, really important, that anybody that has ever been successful at anything, anything at all, you, me, the most famous person, the most successful person you can think of, anybody that has ever been successful at anything, has always had a coach, a mentor, or a teacher, or somebody that they've allowed them to push them beyond what is comfortable. Let me repeat myself. Anybody that has ever, ever been successful at anything at all, walking, talking, riding a bicycle, painting, drawing, dancing, or whatever, Anybody that's ever been successful has always had a coach, a mentor, a teacher, or somebody that they've allowed them to push them beyond what is comfortable. What does that mean? That means that, that your success in life 
I'm telling you this, just having done this for three decades now, your success in life lies on your ability to go beyond the uncomfortableness, to go outside your comfort, when it doesn't feel good, when you don't want to do it, when it feels like, ah, I'm never going to succeed, and you're going through all this stuff inside your head and everything, to push beyond it, to have somebody help you push beyond it, to show you what's on the other side. That's where your success lies. Because here's what you'll find that when you have somebody that's going to help you across that threshold, then those uncomfortable times get shorter and shorter and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until pretty soon you show up and you welcome them. And when they show up, you go over them, around them, under them or whatever to get whatever that you want. So seek out a coach and a mentor. Seek out them both. Start simple. Go on YouTube. Look on something that works. Find people that, that you know, now it's so easy. You can find somebody that they, you can find out, you know, ask them how they did that. You can find uh, interviews about people about, you know, how they were coached, what they believed, those kinds of things. Lastly, I'm going to say this. There's three things that in, in your coaching, whoever you go to a, a coach, that you want to make sure that this person has helped you able to do. And number one, and that is what we call the modeling process. Somebody that's going to help you Model success. And what that means is copy success. And success is, and when I say success, you know, it's your own, your own terms and whatever it is, but there's three things that you want to look at. And that is when you look at another person, you want to look and find out what their beliefs are about X, you know, about running, about, uh, about driving a car, painting, driving. And this is really, really important because you want to find out what their beliefs are because those are the beliefs that you want to adhere to. You want to have those beliefs as well. And this says, well, I believe you got to get up early, you got to stay up late, you got to do stuff like that. Then you got to ingest that stuff if you want to go along with that types of, that types of person's uh, beliefs are. Secondly, you want to find out, you want to model how they use their body. You know, people like people like themselves. And when you're around somebody that, that's, you know, upwardly moving their movement or stuff like that, if you see somebody that's a great runner, you want to model how they move their body. And then lastly, you want to model how, and model is just another word, a fancy word for copy or do the same as, how they schedule and the syntax and the order in which they do things. You know, if you're going to bake a cake, you don't, you don't start off and, 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 you know, put, you know, an empty pan in the oven or whatever. You got to add the, this first and this second. You got to mix them together. You got to bake this for a little while. You got to do that. There's an order in which you do things. Look for those things as you look for a mentor or a teacher or a coach. And what happens is all you got to do is follow the steps. You know, the old saying is success leaves clues. And I think that's great because it's true. If you look at somebody that's successful, somebody that has achieved something, you can find and you can search and find and you can see, well, they may have done that, you may have done that. Well, I add to it. Success leaves footprints. If you have a coach or a mentor, they're going to show you where there's a footprint here, there's a footprint there. You just put your foot here, you do this, you do that, you do this, and you'll get the same results as well. It's super simple. I didn't say it was always easy, but I said it's super simple. Difference between a coach, somebody that's been there and done that. Somebody, the difference between a coach and a mentor is somebody that's been there and done that and somebody that has some knowledge about something that can help you. Speaking of which, how I can help you, I got you. I, I always, I, I love to give away things and I'm something that is absolutely free from, from me to you, from my heart to you. Uh, my new book, or some, not, not my new book, my book called Dare to be Magnificent. Click on the link below, get it. We'll ship it to you. It's absolutely free. And, it's, and what I want you to understand is the reason I created this book and the reason I'm giving away is going to teach you. There's some, there's some coaching and mentoring tips inside there as well, but it's not just words that you read and inspire, inspirational stories. It's something that you can do to help you go further faster. So click on the link, make it happen. And thank you so much for allowing me again, if you will, if this is not your first time with me, to poke my head inside your world and, and share with you some of the things that have helped me and self help so many other people as well. And like, subscribe, and click that, uh, uh, that notification button so that you know when we make new videos. And remember, life is exactly what you dare to make it, and fortune fo favors the bold, baby. So the trick to life is to boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. I'll see you at the top.